Now I want to make the smoke effect from scratch. So I'm going to disable this game object, disable it, and then I'm going to create a new particle emitter, and that will be the smoke. So game object, create other particle system. Let's position it a little further away. Turn it. And move it a little closer to the fighter jet, but not too close. Okay, looking at the settings, considering it will be a smoke effect, and smoke will actually carry on in vacuum indefinitely, because it will not encounter any friction, because you are in space, and it it's vacuum, so it will actually continue going and going. I am going to cut it off simply because, well, this is not supposed to be a visualization of space travel, and we do get to have some creative license, or I guess you could if you are creating some sort of instructional game. And we're also working with constricted resources with games, so all the more reasons to make it finite. So this is fine, the distance here. Now, what I do want to change is actually the simulation space, but I'll show you the difference, so I'll actually leave that as it is. I also want more particles, this is not enough particles. I want to make the plume a little thicker. So let's, uh, if I, I want to really make it thick, so I'm actually going to change max particles to 10,000. Let's just bump it up. Let's start with 100. Okay. Let's look at the shape and then see what we can get. And then we can go back to 100 and see if that will be thick enough. Cone is fine. Angle, I want it to be actually really small. 0.3. And the radius, let's make that 0.2. Okay, so here's our smoke. I'm going to skip ahead and I'm going to go directly to a texture sheet animation. This is what I'm selecting. It's outside the screen, sorry, but you're just going to have to trust me on this. Well, you probably are seeing the edges of this word. And I need to apply the material onto this particle system. So this time, just to change things up, I'm going to take smoke plume from my materials folder in your source assets. I'm going to drag it onto this field. It's going to say smoke plume. Now, right away, we are seeing that this effect is uh, currently looping all of my image at once. So we do need to set up the tiling here. So if we look at this image, we are seeing two rows, four columns. So what does it mean for us? Four across the X, two across the Y. Here is our particle effect. Now, I do want to make some other changes. However, right in the beginning, um, even though the video that we saw and the footage that we saw from NASA and overall the smoke plume will actually not be uh, very dark, it will be fairly light. I do want to make this darker. I, I am going to break the rules on this one because this is a fighter jet and it's a little gritty and I want it to look like a pollutant. I want it to look like it's releasing a lot of dark smoke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll back up and I want to change the color. I want to make it dark. something like this. Okay, it's getting a little better. It's still too light though. I'm going to take this up to 500. Okay, well we can go on. We can see right up here that we are still getting some popping. So 
So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change a color over lifetime tab. I'm going to leave this as it is. The only thing I'm really concerned with here is alpha. I'm going to dial it back uh, right up here. Okay, and this cycle is going on for a little too high. I'm going to dial this down to two. Okay, I can't see very well because of this background. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, point the camera uh, directly at the uh, fighter jet here. Okay, now I don't want a blue background. This is going to be in space, so probably the background that you're mostly going to be using is black. I'm going to bring out the game view here. And let's just see how it looks like in the game. Okay, I do want it to get smaller as it dies down. So back in my smoke, which I'm actually going to re rename as smoke, I'm going to create another module, pretty simple one, just size over lifetime. I want it to get smaller as time progresses. And in here, I'm going to specify curve. I'm going to choose one of the presets, a gradual preset. So I can't see this very well. Let me I move the camera a little further out. Okay. Yeah, that's better. I don't want it to be such a cone shape. So actually, I'm going to go back and move this a little above one, like that. Now I noticed that my texture here is looking a little too evenly defined, the texture progression. So to remedy this, what we can actually do is set up a random between two constants, and that way each particle will progress to that end of frame at a different point in time. I actually want a little bit more room, so I'm going to switch over to the particle effects editor. Actually, no, all of them are going to start out from zero, but where they end on the frame will be different. Okay, that looks a little better. Now, to demonstrate that other setting, which I didn't want to demonstrate before, I need to attach a some sort of control script onto my model. Instead of just dragging it around, I would like to use my control keys. So I won't be covering most of this code. I will cover a few, however. So just go ahead and take the script, which has Hero Mover, and drag it onto the Space Carrier. and then take the effect. Currently we're just going to be using the uh, smoke effect. Well, everything else we can map later. And click play. Now we do want some sort of speed up here. I'm going to give speed of 10 and rotation speed of 80. So now we can turn around. Okay, and you can see the problem right away. The smoke is completely following our jet here. We want to leave a trail. Uh, this is more of a cone-like effect. So to do so, and let's go ahead and preserve these values so we don't have to switch them next time. 10 and 80 for, for the rotation speed. So the reason that we're getting a cone effect, the reason that we're not getting a trailing smoke, 
is because all of the particles are moving in relation to their parent. So if the pa parent is the whole particle system, that means that they're relying on that plane. If the plane is turning, so are they. So what we need to do is have them move on the actual world scale, on the world axis, not on the local scale, on the world. So this is pretty easily done. Just change simulation space from local to world. Now we don't see anything now, but if we do start to move this object around, automatically we see that we are getting a trail. Pretty cool.